Lord have mercy. Again, this is struggling me. is no Okay. So past consideration is no consideration. So this aspect differs from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. In English law, that is UK, Australia, past consideration is void. Void in the sense it's called void ab initio, that is from the very beginning. Past consideration, something that where consideration is paid in the past or something that happens in the future would be considered as zero, it would be considered as nil, it would be considered as void. In English law, past consideration is no consideration. Now, a consideration made or paid in the past, and then there is a subsequent promise. You pay the amount earlier, and then there is a subsequent promise. Then such a consideration would not be considered as part of the transaction Hence, it will be considered as no consideration in the subsequent transaction. So this hinges or this is stuck on two principles. One, promise made by the promiser after the benefit is delivered. And there is no detriment caused to the promisee. Let us explain this with an example. See, meet P meets Q after two years. And after seeing Q, P is glad to see that Q has quit alcohol. So P means Q and says, wow, okay, you are a changed person today. You have quit alcohol. So P gets very happy. He's elated and he promises Q that, okay, I will pay you $100 because you have changed your lifestyle last year and now you're totally different and you quit alcohol. So here the question is of a promise for a past performance. You're paying for something that the person you know, there was no agreement between you and you're, you're paying for something which has already happened sometime back. Next is example two. A finds the lost dog of B. B is happy and offers a reward and subsequently doesn't honor the commitment. Now here, there was no offer. There was no promise that was made and accepted and further no consideration promised for performance of the terms of the offer. So after A finds the dog, B decides to give him a reward. Thereby, consideration must come into existence either at the time of making the promise or after it's hidden or after the promise is made. So therefore, consideration must come into existence either at the time of making the promise, or either at the time of making the offer. Example, you're going to the store uh, and you're purchasing something instantly and you're paying for the price or after there is a promise to deliver. Are you understanding me? Either that time or at a future time, at, at some future point. Consideration can be instantly paid or instantly made, or it can be paid in the future, but not in the past. This is according to the English law. Past consideration is no consideration. Now, Yet another example is A promises to pay B $20 if B mows his lawn. 
and he kind of uh, you know smooths the lawn by cutting the you know the grass and mows the lawn a promises to pay b 20 dollars if b mows his lawn so here 20 dollars is a valid present consideration i promise you to pay this much amount if you do this for me it's a present valid consideration now next example if b just goes and mows a's lawn he just goes and mows A's lawn and A sees, wow, it's a surprise. And he praises him and says, good job. And then he's very happy. A says to B, you've done a great job. And then he says, okay, I will pay you $20. So this is a past consideration. The A has been elated, overjoyed, overwhelmed with the perfection of B's work. And B has just, just gone over and mowed his lawn. And then he expresses his desire. This guy says, okay, uh, you know, uh, okay, B, I will pay you $20. So now I want you to understand, there's a spelling mistake there, loan. It's not a loan, it's lawn, L-A-W-N. So B has mowed the lawn before A could promise the $20. So here probably moral obligation arises and not, real, not really legal. So... He's morally obligated, yes, because you said it's the matter of word. Okay, you, I'm very happy, so I, I'll pay you, you know, twenty dollars, and B uh, is entitled to get the twenty dollars. It's a moral obligation, but there is nothing legal in this. So it's a past consideration. So because in English law, UK, Australia, and even in USA, past consideration is no consideration. But in certain countries like India. Malaysia, you know, in certain countries, past consideration may be considered as a good consideration and a valid consideration. But the English law says, that is UK, Australia, and even in the United States of America, past consideration is no consideration. It is not a good consideration. It is not a valid consideration something but the action is done in the past and then you subsequently say okay i will pay you for this now in ray that is a reference to mccardle's case in 1951 william mccardle left a house left a house to his five children in equal shares subject to a life interest for his widow the wife of one of these sons uh, mrs marjorie mccardle carried out improvements to the house amounting to 488 pounds. She also bore the cost of these repairs. After the repairs had been carried out, she got all the five children of McCardle to sign a document in which they promised to repay Mrs. McCardle the 488 pounds or out of the estate when it was eventually distributed. After the testator's widow died, Mrs. McCardle asked for the payment. However, the other four sons refused to pay her. She tried to enforce her interest in the property in the court. The Court of Appeal held that the transaction had not been completed and was imperfect. Therefore, it was only a promise to pay and not a gift. Mrs. McCardle has already performed that work before she asked for the payment. So she completed the job actually, and then she said, okay, now I've done this work, so you will have to pay me this amount. So her consideration was in the past, so past consideration is not good consideration. Therefore, the agreement was unenforceable. I'm sure this case would make the things clear for you. Next is in Ross Corla versus Thomas 1842 case. I don't have the entire citation, just the year. The claimant bought a horse from the defendant. After the sale finished, the defendant told the claimant that it was a sound horse. That means it is mentally sound horse and did not have any vice such as a bad temper. It did not have any problems in it like, you know, bad temper. So the truth, however, was quite different from what the claimant had been told. The horse had a very bad temper and was ferocious. So the claimant sued the defendant. The court held that. The claimant could not sue because the statement about the horse had taken place before the sale was completed. And had the defendant made the same promise before the sale, then the defendant would have a claim. Now here, because the promise was made after the sale, the claimant was not able to provide any consideration for it and hence he was not able to make a claim on it. Thus, past consideration is no consideration. 
Now, what are the exceptions? That means normally past consideration is no consideration, but there are exceptions to this rule in the English law. There are certain circumstances under which past consideration will be considered as a good consideration. When, if the promiser requests as such, you know, or if he says, if it, it proceeds from the promiser or, you know, the one who is uh, really willing uh, to give you something for a consideration in return says, okay, you can pay me, you know, at a later stage, first I will complete the job. So if they say so. Next is prior agreement between the parties. That has been an earlier agreement saying there is agreement, between, mutual agreement between the parties that agreement, uh, I mean, the consideration should be paid in such and such a manner and past consideration should be permitted. Then, of course, when, you know, even subsequently when they say, okay, we will honor such a consideration. Okay, fine. So it is a good consideration. If the parties say, let us honor such, an, uh, such a consideration, that means it's a good consideration. The next exception is the promise occurs just before the execution of the act. But, I mean, it, there is a close nexus. There is proximity between the action and the consideration that is being paid. It's quite close. So the promise occurs just before execution of the act. So th these are the exceptions to the, to the English rule that past consideration is no consideration. For this, there is a case law. This is a, a you know a landmark decision again. Land play versus Brett Wade, sixteen fifteen, H O B one not five. The defendant Brett Wade killed a man. He asked the plaintiff Lamplay to secure him a pardon from the king. The plaintiff spent many days doing this, riding and journeying at his own cost across the country to where the king was and back again. Afterwards, the defendant promised to pay the plaintiff 100 pounds in gratitude. Then he later forgot about that money. He failed to pay it. Then the plaintiff sued the defendant right away. But here, the court decreed in favor of the plaintiff, that is Lapley. The promise was indeed given after the plaintiff had acted. See, first it was just a request. You know, Lampley told Brethwit, see, uh, you know, sorry, Brethwit told, uh, you know, Lampley, uh, say, see, Lamplay, I'm actually not at any fault. Could you just go to the king and bring a pardon from me? And then to do this, you know, he took a long time and he journeyed at his own cost. He, you know, put his own money to where the king was living and back again. So later on, this guy was really released. Then after that, the defendant promised to pay the plaintiff 100 pounds. In fact, he was very grateful to him because finally he got his release. He secured his release. But later on, after this guy got released, he failed to pay the money. Then the plaintiff sued the defendant Brethway. Now the court said that, look, uh, you know, Lampley, Brethway requested you, and at that time, he did not promise you to pay 100 pounds. After you completed the job, after you secured the release, he was so happy, I'm just telling you in simple terms that you understand. He was so happy that he said, okay, I'm so happy that I'm released now. I'll pay you 100 pounds. I'm grateful to you. And later on, he forgot about it. And this guy was very happy. Wow, this guy is going to pay me 100 pounds. And later he didn't pay it. So he was annoyed and he was said, my God, he was having dreams of receiving 100 pounds. And then he went to the court saying that, see this guy, I, I took all the trouble and released him. And uh, later on, he said that he's going to pay me 100 pounds, which I didn't ask for it, of course. And he did not promise to me earlier, of course. But still, I released him. And later on, because he was very happy, overjoyed, he said, I will pay you 100 pounds. And then he forgot about it. So now I'm dreaming of that 100 pounds. So now court, give me that 100 pounds. Make him to pay it to me. The court said, no. It cannot be paid to you. What do you think the court will say? Okay, let's see. So the court decreed in favor of the plaintiff, that is Lampley. The promise was indeed given after the plaintiff had acted. However, the plaintiff had acted upon a request made by the defendant. So there was Justice Bowen who observed that a mere voluntary courtesy will not have a consideration to uphold an assumption. But if that courtesy were moved by a suit or request on the party, that gives the assumptionist it will bind. 
Consequently, the court held that that is subsequent later on as a result, if A does something for B at the request, now afterward, B promises to pay A for their trouble, then that promise is a good consideration. The latter promise was considered to be part of the same single transaction and was therefore enforceable. Are you understanding me? So here, this is an example of the case that is an exception to the rule of English law that past consideration is no consideration. And in this case, they said that, well, there has been an act of courtesy that will not really have a consideration to uphold as you know, an assumption. But if that courtesy were moved by a suit or the request of the party, that gives the assumptionist that it will bind. So the court said that if A does something to B for B at the request, now after that B promises to pay A for their trouble, then the promise is a good consideration. So this is an exception to the rule. So the latter promise was considered to be part of the same single transaction and was therefore enforceable. This is an exception. But the normal rule is past consideration is no consideration then there are exceptions in the promise or request as such, prior agreement between the parties or subsequent agreement to honor such an understanding. Lamplay versus Brettwaite. The promise occurs just before execution of the act. So in Lamplay versus Brettwaite, there has been a subsequent agreement to honor such an understanding. Next is in Earl versus Angel. There was an aunt who offered to pay her nephew $500 if he attended her funeral. So nephew attended the funeral after she died, but the aunt's estate refused to pay. So nephew sued the estate to enforce the contract, saying that, no, my auntie told me that she would pay me $500 if I come for the funeral. Now, let's see what the court says. The court decreed in favor of the nephew and said that the court concluded that the contract was reinforced by sufficient consideration, that is, auntie's promise to pay $500 dollars in exchange for the nephew's promise to attend the funeral. So the court held that a contract to pay money after one's own death is valid. These come under exceptions to the rule past consideration is no consideration. Now in countries like India, Malaysia, past consideration is considered as a good consideration. It is a good consideration in India and Malaysia. A past act done at request will be a good consideration for a subsequent promise example Lamplay's case and as for the Indian Contract Act section 2d they say that consideration it can be a past consideration present or future so consideration may be past present or future but the English law says past consideration is no consideration like UK USA and even Australia so while consideration moves concurrently that is you know simultaneously with the promise concurrently simultaneously with the promise, then it can be identified as present or executed consideration. If the consideration is simultaneous with the promise, like I said, like you go to the shop and you buy something. So it is executed consideration or present consideration. You buy some provisions from a nearby general store and immediately pay for the same. Your consideration that is moving from you to the shopkeeper is present or executed consideration. Now, what is future consideration? When consideration for a promise or offer moves subsequently after the agreement is formed, it is called as future or executory consideration. Example, A has promised to sell and B has promised to pay. Now, when the goods are delivered to B's go down, then B will honor the consideration. That is something that has happened to happen in the future. So when I receive the goods, then I will pay you. So this is future consideration or executory in the process of executory consideration. So therefore, consideration can be past, present, or future. I'm repeating. Types of consideration, past consideration, present consideration, future consideration. Question for exam. Consideration can be past, present, or future. Comment. So you'll have to give all the three considerations. And with its exception for past consideration, Lamplay versus Brethwick case, which is a landmark case. Next, Indian contract access an agreement without consideration is void. That means when there is no consideration, it is an invalid agreement. That's what they mean to say. Now, what are the exceptions to the concept of 
consideration. We learned about past consideration exceptions. Now we are seeing what are the exceptions to the entire concept of consideration? What are the exceptions? What consideration will not be really you know, taken into account? So the court may ignore the concept of consideration in the following circumstances, time barred debt. That is when it is beyond the law of limitation. Time barred, we all, we all know that you know, uh, to enforce, uh, you know, someone has to pay you some amount, say A has to pay B uh, $10,000. And, uh, you know, there is a limitation in the court of law, according to the laws of limitation, depending upon jurisdiction to jurisdiction, like, okay, you can file a, a suit of recovery within three years, or within five years, or, you know, a civil case within 10 years, for example, example, so time barred debt. So if it is a time bar debt, it is beyond the law of limitation. Sometimes the court may agree because what happens is the debt is still existing. So, okay, in some other way, the court will say, okay, there is a consideration here. Well, next is a voluntary act. Someone does a voluntary act or charitable act. So these are exceptions to consideration. Next is a very, very important doctrine. That is a doctrine of promissory estoppel. We will do it during the next class, but this uh, uh you you know i you cannot call it really as part of consideration but yes uh you know they say that a promise that is made without consideration is not generally enforceable and this doctrine of promissory estoppel is actually a part of you know contract law it's a principle in contract law and it revolves around the laws of equity or the principles of equity in law that when a party promises another party something and the other party acts upon the promise, then the party making the promise is stopped from retracting from the promise. I'm repeating. If someone promises something to another person and the other person acts on that promise and then the person who promises says, no, now I'm not interested, I'm not ready to go ahead of, for that. So the person has already acted. Certainly, he's you know encountered some loss because he's acted on the promise. So now the law says that to the person who has actually promised, who's now now you know uh, withdrawing from the promise, he says, "Look, you are stopped." It's a French term. Stopped. It's come from the French term. Term stopped. Stopped or estoppel. You are stopped or you are you are stopped. You are just stopped. You are not permitted. You are not allowed to go back on your words. You are not allowed to go back on your promise. You are not allowed to retract from the promise. So this is the principle of estoppel. It's a legal principle that cautions parties to a contract from going back on their promise and so on. Okay, so we will do it during the next class because um, I could just even uh, send you a recording on this, but I want you to be present because if you have any questions, you can ask me because this is an important principle and this can come for your exams as well because it's an important concept. Doctrine of promissory is stupid. Okay. It simply means that the promiser is a stop or prohibited from taking the stance that he did not intend to create a legally enforceable relationship, which further needs to be proved in the court of law. Uh, there is a very important case here, Walton Store, that is an Australian case. Australia High Court decided the case. You can go through the case. It's very interesting. And there is also something called as Comb versus Comb, where there was, uh, you know, there is Justice Denning here. So he, uh, you know, did not want to displace the concept of consideration. And uh, he said that we cannot displace the concept. And then he explained the doctrine of promissory estoppel uh, in this case. And um, he said that, when there is no consideration in exchange of a promise and so therefore there cannot be any contract that is actually formed so we will study um walton stores case next class and the comb versus comb because uh, these are important case laws it's, uh comb versus a uh, comb is an english case and walton stores is uh, a australian case and doctrine of promissory estoppel is an easy doctrine it revolves around the concept of equity if you understand it's easy so that's all for today. 
After that, we will do what are the elements in the doctrine of promissory estoppel, and that's all for today. And then we will move, proceed further for the other elements that are important for legally enforcing a agreement to be considered to be a contract. It is my minor's contract, minority, I mean, whether at all a minor can enter into contract capacity and so on. Okay, uh, your attendance, Abdurrahman, Asha, Issa, Kasim, Nema. Okay. Bye-bye. If you have any questions, you can ask me now. If not, we will meet the next class. Okay. Bye-bye. Welcome. Bye. Thank you. Bye.